Hello everyone, once again welcome back to the ETO COC December 2023 question paper discussion. So in the last video I had finished discussion till the topic question number 4 and I told that I will be discussing in the next part. So here is the video in which I will be discussing the rest part of this question paper. Okay so without wasting any time let us start with the question number 5a. So how the power that is transferred across the air gap of three phase induction motor is represented explain the terms and what portion of this is useful power so to answer this question i would like to take you to my notes so as you all know the power to the induction motor is provided in the stator part so here is the full representation of how the power transfer takes place and what are the losses what are the useful power so first we give the input supply to the stator of the motor so that power is known as p1 input power to the stator and you all are aware that once the three phase supply is given to a stator a rotating magnetic field is created so in that eddy current loss and hysteresis losses will be there also known as copper loss and iron loss that is in the stator part now once the rotating magnetic field is uh, created and it will cut the rotor conductors so that is called the power is getting transferred from the stator to the rotor part via air gap so this is rotor input p2 power now once the power is coming to the rotor there will be loss of rotor copper loss and iron loss pcs represented by and after that there will be the rotor will rotate and it will create some mechanical power so me mechanical power developed pm also known as gross rotor torque represented by te now once this power is created there will be windings and friction loss and finally we will be getting is the rotor output and to represent all this there is a formula also representing uh, relation between all types of power uh, this is a question so with this i would like you all to note down this four formulas which will help you in solving numerical question one such uh, question was asked was this question power is given then slip is given and find out full load copper loss, rotor input, shaft torque, gross EM torque. So to find the answer to all these questions, you need to understand these four formulas. So with this, you can make a half page answer since this question is of six mark. I think half page or three by fourth page of answer will be sufficient to answer this question. You can write in the in the writings. I have just shown by arrow marks. You can explain each terms. What is copper loss? stator copper loss rotor copper loss different terms you can explain so let's move on to the numerical part of this and to answer this question you need a very good concept of dc motor the different types of dc motor how the windings are corrected and few formulas are there which i will be telling you while i answer this question so that you have to remember so let's start with the question first a 440 shunt motor takes an armature current of 30 amps at 700 revolution per minute the armature resistance is 0 0.7 ohm. If the flux is suddenly reduced 20%, to what value will the armature current rise momentarily? Assuming unchanged resisting torque to motion, what will be the new steady value of speed and armature current? A sketch graph showing armature current and speed as function of time during transition from initial to final steady state condition. So while solving such uh, numerical questions, you must read the question two to three times and understand each part, what is given and what is asked. So I have drawn the circuit diagram of the motor from this question. So let's start with the given part in this question. So first 440 voltage is given. This is the voltage input to the motor. After that IA armature current is given by 30 amps and speed is 700 RPM armature resistance is 0 0.7 ohm so this is the armature resistance so this is the field flux phi so here in this all the quantities are known except eb eb is the back emf generated in the motor so to formula to find out the eb is v minus ia into ra since so this is the supply voltage the current is coming to this part and there is a ia ra drop in this so we can easily find out V minus IA RA, we will get EB here. So 440 minus 30 into 0 0.7, we are getting 419 volt. So let's call this as EB1. Now in the next part of question, it is given that our flux phi is reduced by 20%. 
so let us call our new flux phi 2 as 0 0.8 times of phi 1 that is 20 percent less so in the question it is asked that if the flux is reduced by 20 percent to what value the current will change momentarily so for that we need to find the effect on back emf if the flux is changing so this is the formula which shows the relation between back emf and the flux so eb is back emf p is number of poles phi is flux z is number of conductors n is speed 60 and a is number of parallel path so in our case number of poles p is constant number of conductors z is constant and for the moment we are assuming that the speed is constant since we are finding the momentary change in the current and a is uh, number of parallel path is also constant so here we can see that only eb and phi this two is a quantity which is changing so we can write as eb is proportional to phi so eb by phi is a constant k so we can say that eb1 by phi1 is equal to eb2 by phi2 since this is a constant part so our eb1 is 419 we got here phi is equal to eb2 by phi phi2 phi2 is 0 0.8 into phi1 so this phi1 phi1 get cancelled we are getting eb2 new back emf as 419 into 0 0.8 335.2 volt so this is a new back emf now once our eb is changing our current will also change so this is the equation v minus ia ra is equal to eb so our final ia will change to 149.7 so we can say momentarily change in current is 149 minus 30 30 is our initial current so what change we are getting is 119.7 amps so this is the momentarily changes current once the flux is changed or flux is reduced by 20 percent now in the next part of the question it is asked to find out the final current and speed and it is given that the torque remains constant so this is the equation which tells the relation between torque and armature current ia so t is equal to 1 by 2 pi into phi into z into p by a into i in i a so in this z p and a this part remains constant it is not changing what is changing is our flux phi and our current i a so we can write as t is proportional to phi into i a and since it is given that torque remains constant so we can say t1 is equal to t2 so similarly we can also write phi1 into i1 is equal to phi2 into i a2 phi1 i a1 is given as 30 amps in the question itself phi2 is 0 0.8 into phi1 20 percent reduced and we have to find out the i a2 so from this equation we will get i a2 is equal to 37.5 now once we know the final i a2 we can find out the eb part the back emf for the new current i a so we are getting as 413.75 volt and now this is the equation which tells the relation between back emf and n that is speed of the motor so in this part since p is constant z is constant only phi and n is changing so we can write as eb is proportional to phi into n so we can also write as eb1 by eb2 is equal to phi1 into n1 by phi 2 into n2 so eb1 we already have 419 eb2 we have 413 phi1 we have n1 is given as 700 phi2 is 0 0.8 times of phi1 and we have to find out the n1 n2 so rearranging these terms we are getting n2 as 700 into 413.75 by 419 into 0 0.8 and the speed which we are getting is 864.04 rpms and in the next part of the question it is asking to draw this sketch graph showing armature current and speed as a function of time so this is easily you can draw so let's consider this as current let's consider this x-axis as time so initially the motor was running at the amp 30 amps and once the flux is reduced it 
got a momentary jump of 149 and it later it reduced to 37 amps so this is 30 this part is 149 and finally settled at 37 amps and for the speed initially it was running at the speed of 700 rpm and then it got changed to 864 so this is speed in so this is 700 and this one is 864 and consider this as time so this two graph you can draw showing the transition from the initial to final steady state condition and guys frankly speaking if you don't know the concept of dc motor or you don't know the equations of all the equations which are used in this solving this question you won't be able to solve this question since there are so many types of questions can come from dc dc motor changing different parameters and asking you to solve different parameters so it's best that you understand the full concept of dc motor and for that i would like you i would like to recommend you to read one pdf which is also there in the telegram group the name of the pdf is numerical coc written so this is prepared by some eto maybe antony cilium ragul so it's a very good notes very good handwriting it is given so you can fully read the basic of dc motor the types of dc motor the circuit diagram few important formulas are there which i have highlighted in the red box this formula there are uh, few theory part is explained in this the, the circuit diagram the, in the motor condition in generator condition the formula is different slightly different for in case of motor in case of generator the compound machine what is the circuit diagram then emf equation of dc motor the different terms are explained and final formula here this is the same this is the formula which i used to explain after that the torque power efficiency so the different losses this relation between speed and different parameters application of dc motor so very in very brief and very important only important points are given in this pdf you must read this and then only you will be able to solve and so many solved questions are also there in a very good handwriting so if you practice all these questions it will help you to understand the full concept and not only the dc motor all the machine chapter in this it is explained that this transformer the few basic concept of transformer some formulas this emf equation of transformer voltage transformer ratio so these things are given here which will help you to understand the rating transformer the losses in transformer a lot of question is asked in the transformer also circuit diagram of transformer and some examples are also given so, okay now moving into the next question question 6a what are the factors which determine the synchronous speed of a motor and this is a numerical questions very very easy question so as you all know synchronous speed in s is given by 120 f by p so frequency and p the input frequency and number of poles these are the two factors which will determine the ns synchronous speed since this question is a six mark question just writing uh, this formula and writing one line i think is not sufficient so you must uh, elaborate this answer at least to half page so for that i just took the help of chat gbt i will show you i just so here is the explanation given by chat gbt it's almost half page answer you can just uh, take the screenshot of this and write these answers in your notebook so in this way you can write a six mark question now moving to the numerical part this is also very very simple so this numerical i have solved in my notes so this is the same question three phase induction motor four pole is supplied with a 50 frequency calculate synchronous speed so ns is equal to 120 f by p 120 into f by 4 so 500 is a synchronous speed now in the second part is speed of rotor when slip is 4% so this is the formula for slip so slip is given 0.04% ns is 51500 we have to calculate nr so from this we can get nr is equal to 1440 rpm rotor frequency when speed of rotor is 600 so let us first calculate slip s when nr is 60, 600 so we will get it 0 0.6 and rotor frequency will be 0 0.6 into stator frequency that is 30 hertz next is section 3 
सो इन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन सेक्शन थ्री इज क्वेश्चन नंबर सेवन विथ रेफरेंस टू मराटाइम लेबर कन्वेंशन एम एल सी टू थाउजेंड सिक्स डिस्कस द रिक्वायरमेंट फॉर सी फेयर रिगार्डिंग मिनिमम एज टू वर्क ऑन बोर्ड वेसल सी फेयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट एग्रीमेंट आवर्स ऑफ वर्क एंड आवर्स ऑफ रेस्ट सिंस सेक्शन थ्री डील्स विथ मोस्टली मार्कोल सोलर्स रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन ऑल दिस थिंग्स यू कैन ईजिली टेक द हेल्प ऑफ चैट जी बी टी टू फाइंड आंसर्स टू ऑल दिस थिंग्स बिकॉज दिस ऑल थिंग्स आर ए रिटर्न डॉक्यूमेंट एंड चैट जी बी टी विल प्रोवाइड अ वेरी स्ट्रक्चर्ड आंसर्स टू दिस क्वेश्चन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू चैट जी बी टी टू फाइंड द आंसर ऑफ दिस सो हेयर इज द आंसर फ्रॉम द चैट जी बी टी मेरा टाइम लेबर कन्वेंसन टू थाउजेंड सिक्स आउटलाइंस वेरियस रिक्वायरमेंट्स रिलेटेड टू मिनिमम एज फॉर वर्क ऑन बोर्ड शिप हेयर आर की पॉइंट समराइजिंग दिस रिक्वायरमेंट्स फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज मिनिमम एज सो अकॉर्डिंग टू रेगुलेशन वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट थ्री ऑफ एम एल सी टू थाउजेंड सिक्स नो पर्सन बिलो द एज ऑफ सिक्सटीन सैल बी एम्प्लॉयड और वर्क ऑन ए सिप पॉइंट टू एक्सेप्शन फॉर ट्रेनिंग देर इज एन एक्सेप्शन फॉर सी फेयर बिटवीन एज ऑफ फिफ्टीन एंड सिक्सटीन रेगुलेशन वन पॉइंट वन पॉइंट थ्री अलाउज फॉर एम्प्लॉयमेंट फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ ट्रेनिंग अंडर द स्पेसिफिक कंडीशन आउटलाइट इन द स्टैंडर्ड कंडीशन फॉर यंग वर्कर्स अंडर एटीन फॉर सी फेयर अंडर द एज ऑफ एटीन द एम एल सी एस्टैब्लिशेज कंडीशन टू इंश्योर देयर सेफ्टी हेल्थ एंड वेलबींग दीज कंडीशन आर आउटलाइन इन रेगुलेशन थ्री पॉइंट वन एंड स्टैंडर्ड ए थ्री वन प्रोहिबिटेड यंग वर्क फॉर यंग सी फेयर्स द कन्वेंसन स्पेसिफाइज सर्टन टाइप्स ऑफ वर्क दैट आर प्रोहिबिटेड फॉर यंग सी फेयर्स दीज रिस्ट्रिक्शंस एम टू प्रोटेक्ट देम फॉर पोटेंशियली हजार्डस टास्क एजुकेशन एंड वोकेशनल गाइडेंस एम एल सी रिकोगनाइज द इम्पोर्टेंस ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड वोकेशनल गाइडेंस फॉर यंग सिंग फेयर्स इट एम्फेसाइज दैट देयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट शुड नॉट इंटरफेयर विद देयर अटेंडेंस एट स्कूल और पार्टिसिपेशन इन वोकेशनल गाइडेंस और ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स रेगुलेशन वन पॉइंट टू रिक्वायर्स शिप्स टू कीप एंड मेनटेन रिकॉर्ड ऑफ एज ऑफ सी फेयर्स ऑन बोर्ड यू कैन एड मोर पॉइंट्स टू योर आंसर्स फ्रॉम दिस टॉपिक्स लाइक नाइट वर्क अ पीरियड ऑफ एटलीस्ट नाइन आवर्स स्टार्टिंग नो लेटर दैन मिड नाइट एंड एंडिंग नो अर्लियर दैन फाइव ए एम ऑफ सी फेयर अंडर द एज ऑफ एटीन सेल बी प्रोहिबिटेड एक्सेप्ट देर इज अब एक्सेप्शन द इफेक्टिव ट्रेनिंग ऑफ सी फेयर कंसर्न इन अकॉर्डेंस विद स्टैब्लिश प्रोग्राम्स एंड शेड्यूल्स वुड बी इम्पेयर द स्पेसिफिक नेचर ऑफ ड्यूटी और रिकोगनाइज ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम रिक्वायर्स दैट सी फेयर कवर्ड बाई एक्सेप्शन परफॉर्म ड्यूटीज एट नाइट एंड द अथॉरिटी डिटरमाइंस आफ्टर कंसल्टेसन विद दिप ऑनर्स एंड सी फेयर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कंसर्न फॉर सी फेयर ऑफ एज एटीन सेल बी प्रोहिबिटेड वेयर वर्क इज लाइक टू डेवर्टाइज देयर हेल्थ और सेफ्टी रिगार्डिंग वर्किंग एंड लिविंग कंडीशन स्पेशल अटेंशन टू बी गिवेन टू द नीड्स ऑफ यंग पर्सन अंडर द एज ऑफ एटीन लेट एस मूव टू द पार्ट बी सी फेयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट एग्रीमेंट लेट्स गो बैक टू चैट जी बी टी फॉर द आंसर अ सी फेयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट एग्रीमेंट ऑल्सो कॉमनली नॉन एज सी फेयर कॉन्ट्रैक्ट और मेरा टाइम एम्प्लॉयमेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज ए लीगल डॉक्यूमेंट दैट आउटलाइंस इ टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन ऑफ एम्प्लॉयमेंट फॉर सी फेयर वर्किंग ऑन शिप्स इट सर्व एज द एम्प्लॉयमेंट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट बिटवीन सी फेयर एंड द शिप ऑनर और द कंपनी ऑपरेटिंग द वेसल हेयर आर की कंपोनेंट्स द पॉइंट्स आर पर्सनल डिटेल्स सो इट विल इंक्लूड योर फुल नेम डेट ऑफ बर्थ नेशनैलिटी एंड अदर पर्सनल इन्फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द सी फेयर एम्प्लॉयमेंट डिटेल्स दैट इज ड्यूरेशन ऑफ द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जॉब टाइटल पोजिशन वेसल्स नेम एंड टाइप ऑफ वेसल टर्म्स एंड कंडीशन ऑफ योर एम्प्लॉयमेंट वेजेस एंड बेनिफिट डिटेल्स ऑफ सी फेयर वेजेस इंक्लूडिंग एनी ओवर टाइम और बोनस अरेंजमेंट बेनिफिट सच एज लिव एंटरटेनमेंट रिपेट्रिएशन प्रोविजन एंड प्रोविजन फॉर मेडिकल केयर ऑल्सो टू बी स्पेसिफाइड लीव एंड वेकेशन टर्मिनेशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट हेल्थ एंड सेफ्टी डिस्प्यूट रेजोल्यूशन फ्यूमर पॉइंट्स लाइक गवर्निंग लॉ एंड जोरिस्डिक्शन रिपेट्रिएशन एंड अदर क्लासेस मिसलेनियस दिस ऑल डिटेल्स विल बी देयर इन योर एम्प्लॉयमेंट एग्रीमेंट लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर सी आवर्स ऑफ वर्क एंड आवर्स ऑफ रेस्ट सो द मरा टाइम लेबर कन्वेंसन इन पार्ट बी स्पेसिफिकली एड्रेसेज द रेगुलेशन ऑफ आवर्स ऑफ वर्क एंड रेस्ट फॉर द सी फेयर दिस पार्ट ऑफ कन्वेंसन ऑल्सो नॉन एज रेगुलेशन टू सो रेगुलेशन टू ऑफ एम एल सी डील्स विथ वर्क ऑफ रेस्ट आवर्स एंड वर्क आवर्स द फर्दर डिटेल्स मैक्सिमम आवर्स ऑफ वर्क सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द रूल मैक्सिमम आवर्स ऑफ वर्क सेल नॉट एक्सीड फोर्टीन आवर्स इन एनी ट्वेंटी फोर आवर्स पीरियड एंड सेवेंटी टू आवर्स इन एनी सेवन डे पीरियड म
10 hours of rest in any 24 hours of period and 77 hours of rest in any 7 day period. Exceptions and maximum work hours of work in emergency situation. The convention allows for flexibility during emergency situations or situations related to the ship's safety such as during drills or actual emergencies. However, these provisions are to ensure that following following an emergency seafarers are provided with the adequate rest to compensate for any reduction in the rest hours. Re record keeping. Ship owners are required to maintain record of daily hours of work and rest for each seafarers. Ent entitlement to leave. Standard A 2.3.4 ensures that seafarers are entitled to leave periods which should be provided promptly upon completion of the period of work. The goal of this regulation is to prevent fatigue and ensure that seafarers have adequate rest to maintain their health and well-being. Compliance with these standards helps to create a safe working environment on board ships and contribute to overall safety of the maritime operation. It's important to note that these standards are applicable to all seafarers and deviations from these standard hours request justifications and must be compensated with equivalent period of rest. Let's move on to question number 8. With reference to entry into enclosed space on board, define enclosed space and give examples of enclosed space on board. So according to Solas definition of enclosed space, enclosed space means a space which has any of the following characteristic. Limited openings for entry and exit, inadequate ventilation, not designed for continuous work occupancy. This definition underscores the potential hazards associated with enclosed space on ships, emphasizing limited access points, ventilation concerns, and the fact that these spaces are not intended for continuous human presence. Now examples of enclosed space on merchant vessels. The first one is cargo hold. All the cargo hold is enclosed space. Space where cargo is stored such as dry cargo hold, bulk cargo hold. This area may have limited access and may require entry for cargo inspection and cleaning or maintenance. Ballast tanks, fuel tanks, void spaces, pump rooms, tunnels and passage, passageways, chain locker, compartment below decks. So in all these points you can write the single single explanation only that's enough. It's crucial to recognize that entering enclosed space poses serious risk including the potential for accumulation of hazardous gas or substance. Proper safety procedures, atmospheric testing and adherence to established protocols as outlet, outlined in international regulations like SOLAS are essential to ensure the safety of individuals entering or working in these spaces on a merchant vessel. Now let's move to the next question. Describe the checks done for testing the atmosphere inside such enclosed space. Testing the atmosphere inside an enclosed space on a ship is critical safety measure to ensure that it is safe for personnel to enter. This testing is conducted to identify and quantify potential hazards, particularly the presence of toxic gases or lack of oxygen. The following are the checks typically conducted. Number one is oxygen level. It should be more than in the range of 19.5 to 23.5. Number two is flammable gas check presence of flammable gas or vapor this is crucial to prevent the risk of explosion combustible gas detectors are commonly used for this purpose toxic gases test for the presence of toxic gas that may be harmful to human health common toxic gas include hydrogen sulfide carbon monoxide and other chemical vapors depending on the cargo or substance stored in the space ventilation assess the ventilation within the enclosed space inadequate ventilation can lead to build up of hazardous substance Proper airflow is essential for maintaining a safe atmosphere. Temperature and humidity. Measure the temperature and humidity levels. Extreme temperature or high humidity can affect the comfort or safety of personnel working in the closed space. It can lead to dehydration. Testing at different levels. Since gases may stratify, testing should be conducted at different levels within the enclosed space to ensure a comprehensive assessment of the atmosphere. Time of the day. Consider the time of the day as atmospheric condition may vary. For example, gas concentration may change due to temperature fluctuations, cargo operation or other factors. Documentation Keep accurate record of atmospheric testing results. This documentation is essential for safety compliance and may be required by the regulations. Calibration of equipment This is very important when you are 
doing the uh, test of the oxygen or the combustible gas or the toxic gas first of all you should make sure that your equipment can read accurate data so ensure testing equipment is regularly calibrated and properly maintained to ensure accurate readings training and competency ensure that personnel conducting atmospheric testing are trained and competent in using the testing equipments and interpreting results so the conclusion is before entering an enclosed space it is crucial to follow established procedures which may include obtaining proper permits implementing safety measures and providing adequate personal protective equipment the testing of atmosphere is a fundamental steps in ensuring the safety of individuals working in or entering enclosed space on a ship next question explain safety precautions taken prior to entry into enclosed space on board vessel entering an enclosed space on ship poses significant risk and thorough safety precautions are essential to protect the well-being of the personnel here are the key safety measures and precautions to be taken before entering an enclosed space so first one is risk assessment conduct a comprehensive risk assessment to identify potential hazards within the enclosed space consider factors such as type of space previous cargo and any potential presence of toxic gas or flammable substance second is atmospheric testing test the atmosphere inside the enclosed space using appropriate gas detectors to check for oxygen levels flammable gases and toxic substance ensure that atmosphere is safe for human entry third is ventilation ensure proper ventilation of enclosed space before entry ventilation helps eliminate or reduce the concentration of hazardous gas and improves air quality isolation and lockout tagout isolate the enclosed space from other system and ensure that machinery or equipment within the space is properly locked out or tagged out to prevent accidental accidental activation permit to enter obtain a confined space entry permit before entering the permit should outline the specific precautions atmospheric conditions and safety measures required for entry communication establish a reliable con- communication system between personnel inside and outside the enclosed space then this uh, this can include radios or other communication devices and also inform bridge before entering and after coming out emergency equipment ensure the availability of proper functioning of emergency equipment including rescue harness self contained breathing apparatus and first aid kits emergency procedures develop and review emergency procedures for rescue operation ensure that all personnel are aware of space routes and evacuation procedure personal protective equipment wear appropriate ppe including protective clothing gloves eye protection respiratory protection based on the hazards identified in the risk assessment training ensure that personnel involved in entry are adequately trained on confined space entry procedures atmospheric testing and emergency response protocols continuous monitoring continuously monitor the atmosphere during entry to detect any changes regularly test the air quality to ensure that it remains within safe limits buddy system implement a buddy system to have personnel work in pairs this helps in case of emergency allowing for prompt assistance pre entry briefing conduct a pre entry briefing to review the task to be performed that is toolbox meeting before any job is conducted potential hazards and emergency procedures ensure that everyone is aware of their roles and responsibility after that post entry review after completing the work conduct a post entry review to discuss any issue encountered and identify lesson learns for the future entries so by adhering to these safety precautions and following established procedures the risk associated with entering enclosed space can be significantly minimized contributing to a safer working environment on board ships so guys as you can see how beautifully chat gpt has constructed the answer of this question i just typed one line question and it gave me a proper answer so i must recommend you all to use chat gpt for your preparation now moving to the last question with reference to free fall live boat of an ocean going ships question a periodical maintenance test and checks on live boat and releasing gear so answer to this is from chat gpt again the answer first is weekly checks conduct a weekly inspection to ensure that live boat and its equipment are in good condition verify the security of the releasing gear by visual inspection ensure that the painter the line that attaches the live boat to the ship 
is properly secured and not damaged. In the monthly checks, perform a more detailed inspection of flyboard and its component on a monthly basis. Verify the operation of releasing gear using secondary means of activation. Confirm that all on all onboard equipment such as oars, paddles, emergency rations is in place and in good conditions. Inspect the condition of lifeboat hull, structure and fittings. Three monthly checks. Conduct a thorough examination of lifeboat including the hull, engine and releasing gear. Check the operation of engine if applicable. Inspect the buoyancy, chambers and confirm their integrity. Grease and lubricate moving parts as necessary. Verify the conditions of lifeboat batteries and ignition and lighting system. Number 4. Annual Load Testing Perform an annual load test which involves lowering the lifeboat to the water with a specified number of person on board. Lifeboat should be released using both primary and secondary means of activation. Inspect the lifeboat after the load test for any signs of damage or malfunction. Number 5. Release Gear Inspection Inspect the lifeboat releasing gear regularly, ensuring that it operates smoothly and without any signs of wear and damage. Confirm that the release mechanism is responsive to both primary and secondary means of activation. Number 6. Operational Test Conduct regular operational tests to ensure that the lifeboat can be quickly and efficiently launched and recovered. Check the proper functioning of the onboard engine if applicable. Verify the operation of lifeboat's steering system. Annual Overhaul Perform a more extensive annual overhaul, which includes a complete examination of the lifeboat, its system and components. Replace any worn or damaged parts. Confirm that the lifeboat's equipment and inventory comply with the regulatory requirements. Now Documentation Maintain comprehensive records of all test inspection and maintenance activities conducted on the free for lifeboat and its releasing gear. So now this is a very big big answer. You can actually cut short and make it small in your own words so that you can complete your answers in the right time. Next part B Secondary means of lowering. So secondary means of lowering in the context of lifeboat refers to alternative method or mechanism for releasing and lowering the lifeboat. For free for lifeboats on ocean going ships, the secondary means of lowering commonly involves mechanical or manual release system. Here are some examples. So secondary mechanical release system, a mechanical lever or device that can be manually operated to release the lifeboat from its stored position. This mechanism is independent of the primary release system and provides an alternative means of initiating the launch. Hydraulic release system. Some lifeboats have a secondary hydraulic release system that allows crew members to manually release the lifeboat using the hydraulic controls. This system may include a hand pump or lever. Manual release levers. Mechanical levers or handles that the crew members can manually operate to release the lifeboat hooks from their securing arrangement. This can involve disengaging locking mechanism to allow the lifeboats to fall freely into the water. Secondary brake release. In some systems, a secondary brake release mechanism is provided. This allows the crew to manually release the brakes, allowing the lifeboat to descend into the water. Also, it is crucial for crew members to be trained in proper use of secondary means of releasing and lowering and to understand the associated procedure for emergency situations. Regular drills and training exercises should be conducted to ensure that crew is familiar with both primary and secondary release system and can respond effectively in the case of an emergency. The specific design and feature of the secondary means of lowering can vary based on the lifeboat model, manufacturer specification and applicable marine regulations. Now let's move on to the last question of this December 2023 question paper that is lifeboat drills. So drills are very important part of the ship life. We always have drills every week. So in the lifeboat drills, lifeboat drills are essentially safety exercises conducted on ships to ensure that crew is familiar with the procedures and operations related to lifeboats and other life-saving appliance. These drills are crucial for preparing the crew for emergency situations such as abandoning ship and often required by international maritime regulations. So here is an overview of lifeboat drills. First, frequency. Regular lifeboat drills should be conducted at least once every month with full abandonment drill every three months. This frequency may be may vary based on flag state regulations and ship's specific circumstances. Crew familiarization. Drills include crew familiarization with location of lifeboats, muster stations and proper use of life jackets and immersion suits. Launching and recovery. 
क्रू मेंबर्स प्रैक्टिस द प्रॉपर लॉन्चिंग एंड रिकवरी ऑफ लाइफ बोट्स इंश्योरिंग दे आर प्रोफिशियंट इन ऑपरेटिंग द रिलीज मेकानिज्म सिक्योरिंग अरेंजमेंट्स एंड हैंडलिंग लॉन्चिंग इक्विपमेंट सेकेंडरी मीन्स ऑफ लोडिंग क्रू मेंबर्स आर ट्रेंड इन यूज ऑफ सेकेंडरी मीन्स ऑफ लोडिंग इंक्लूडिंग मैनुअल रिलीज मेकानिज्म इन केस द प्राइमरी मीन्स फेल्स अबेंडमेंट प्रोसीजियर फुल अबेंडमेंट ड्रिल सिमुलेट द प्रोसेस ऑफ अबेंडरिंग द शिप्स क्रू मेंबर्स बोट लाइफ बोट्स सिमुलेट द डोनिंग ऑफ लाइफ जैकेट्स एंड इमर्सन सूट्स एंड प्रैक्टिस द करेक्ट प्रोसीजर फॉर लॉन्चिंग एंड मैनोवरिंग लाइफ बोट्स अवे फ्रॉम द शिप कम्युनिकेशन द ड्रिल्स इंक्लूड कम्युनिकेशन एक्सरसाइज टू इंश्योर दैट द क्रू मेंबर्स कैन इफेक्टिवली कन्वे इन्फॉर्मेशन ड्यूरिंग एन इमरजेंसी यूजिंग शिप्स कम्युनिकेशन सिस्टम और हैंड हैंड हेल्ड रेडियोज नेविगेशन एंड सीमेंटशिप क्रू मेंबर्स प्रैक्टिस नेविगेशन एंड सीमेंटशिप स्किल्स रिलेटेड टू लाइफ बोट्स इंक्लूडिंग बेसिक स्टियरिंग एंड मैनोवरिंग टेक्निक्स emergency signal recognition crew members learn to recognize emergency signals and alarms associated with lifeboat drills and abandoning ships rule specific training training is tailored to the roles of specific crew members including those responsible for operating lifeboat engines handling communication equipment and coordinating the evacuation process post drill review after each drill a debriefing session is conducted to review the drill's performance identify any issue or areas for improvement and ensure that lessons learned are applied in the future drills documentation all lifeboat drills should be documented including details such as date time particulars participants and any observations or recommendation for improvement so lifeboat drills are not only a regulatory requirement but also a critical component of maritime safety they help ensure that crew is well prepared to respond effectively to emergencies ultimately enhancing an overall safety of the ships and its occupants so guys as told in the earlier answers these answers are big big answers you don't have to write each and everything you won't have that much times so you can make a small 3 to 4 words only you can explain in point wise like this 11 points are there in this so you can write uh, all these points and say a single line explanation is of everything that's all so that will be enough and you will be able to complete your answers in 3 hours time so guys this is the end of the discussion and i hope you have liked the content and you must uh, like the video share and subscribe to this channel a lot of uh, hard work is put in making this content and preparing the content and if you have any doubts or if you find any mistakes in my explanation you are most welcome to comment or message me personally i will surely look after it so thank you for watching the video i will see you in the next video in the next video i will be discussing november 2023 question paper till then jai hind jai bharat